Stream, 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 stream starting soon. Stream starting soon.
Three, two, one. Hey, good evening, and thanks for checking out our youth group here online. Whether you're checking out uh, youth group from Facebook Live, or maybe you're on YouTube and you're watching this, but we're glad you're here. We're glad you're taking the time, and and trust it's going to be worth your time for the next few minutes that we're together. Uh, there are a few announcements I want to point out. I got a list here that I've got to go over and this is the best way to communicate, mass communicate. So the first thing is this Friday night at 7.30, Friday night at 7.30 on Zoom, okay? So we have a Zoom number. If you don't know it, text me. I'll send it out. I'll actually send it out probably on Friday as well. But it is a Bob Ross painting night. So if you don't know who Bob Ross is, look him up on YouTube. But at 7.30, we're going to do a Zoom call. We're going to have a Bob Ross video. And uh, so you can do two things. You can do it with crayons or you can do it with watercolor paint set. You can get a Dollar Tree, Dollar Store, anything like that. And then we got a Bob Ross, two bobbleheads, and we also have a Chia Pet. So we give those away as prizes. So we're going to do this con contest, this competition, and then give away, we'll have a few giveaways that night. So that'll be this Friday night at 7.30. And then... Next Friday, the following Friday, um, we're going to do a movie night again. So if you missed it this Friday, we had a great turnout, a uh, great turnout compared to zero, but we had a great turnout this Friday night on the side parking lot. We watched a movie, had a pizza, and we social distanced, and that was for high school, but we're going to put uh, middle school and high school together, and if anybody wants to come out that night, we'll space out. You bring your chair, bring a blanket, and uh, I believe the movie is going to be Napoleon Dynamite. So if you're Napoleon Dynamite fans... You may want to come and check it out. It's either going to be that or Nacho Libre. We'll let you vote again on uh, social media. So that'll be at 9 o'clock, uh, probably to about 11, 11, 15, the following Friday. Not this coming Friday, but the following Friday. Also, look at the slide real quick. Visual reminder of our young man, uh, Raymond. So uh, I'll just give you an example. Last week, a couple of young men uh, came in and brought their offering in and, um, you know, Gave it to the church because they're not meeting in person. But uh, if you want to do so, uh, we mentioned it last week. It's a great way to continue your faithfulness towards Raymond. Uh, he still has needs, and uh, we still have a sponsorship with him. So go turn that money in. It goes into Hold International. We uh, we have him. Continue to pray for him and pray for his safety and his health. Uh, but you can give towards that. Also, if you're not on U version yet, I know I think there's like 15, 12, 13, 14. Uh, People that are on the U version of my Bible, we're reading through the book of Luke and Acts. And so it's never too late to, to join. So you can jump on tonight. Uh, you can get the link. You can text me directly. And I'll give you the link. You can become part of our reading plan. But tonight's message is based on today's reading. So if you were doing uh, our reading every day since we started last Monday, it'd be on today's reading. So maybe you're a few days behind. You can catch up. But tonight's message will be directly connected to today's reading. All right. So we're talking about life skills that you got to figure out in the faith. And tonight we're going to talk about the idea of compassion. You know, what, what if I don't have it? What if it's not evident in my life? What does that mean? Uh, what does it look like if it is? So stick around here for just a few minutes. We're going to do a game, a video, and then we'll go into the, the message for just a few minutes. The last big announcement is this is August 23rd. John Michael Hinton, he's an illusionist. He travels and speaks uh, and preaches and, and shares um, but he's going to be on a Zoom call because he's in Texas and because of COVID. And so he's going to be live via Zoom call uh, here August 23rd. It's a Sunday night at 8 o'clock. We're going to kick things off. I'm going to be in the side lot. And if uh, you want to come in person and watch it, we're going to have it projected up on the screen as well. And uh, if you're at home and you want to watch it, you want to check into Zoom, you can, you'll be able to get the strength ministry. And then it's going to for a follow up with John Michael Hinton. So... That will be at 8 o'clock on a Sunday night, August 23rd. So we hope you're, you're going to get word out. We're going to have a, a, the Zoom link. We're going to have sign-ups, like a digital ticket, because we're going to have giveaways that night. It's open for everybody. Students, children, parents, uh, families, single adults, whoever wants to uh, connect with us. So we have limited spaces in the Zoom call, though. So uh, that will be out there, available to you. Pay attention to that when it gets sent out to you and respond to that appropriately, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and open up a word of prayer, and then I want you to watch this video of John Michael Hinton. Father, we pray for tonight that our ears are open, our hearts are open, and God, that we may just learn a little bit more tonight about what it is 
to follow in the footsteps of your son, Jesus. We pray against any distractions. I pray that you speak to us, grow us, stretch us, challenge us, transform us. This is in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Check this out. blew our minds so much because you deserved every bit of applause you got at the bows. It was just wonderful. Do me a favor, Eugene, go like this. There is no way. Dude, wait, there wait, is no wait, way. Wait, wait. Stop it. <laughs> what? Hey. You like to eat your Oreos with milk? Here. Magic to me is an opportunity for relationships. What's your name, sir? Michael. Can we be friends? Yes. That's one. With Close Up Magic, I can perform at an upscale dinner party to a stage with over 10,000. You know, I love having the camera on stage so that everyone feels that they're on stage with me. All right, so we are continuing on our message series, Life Skills You Have to Figure Out in the Faith. And so last week, if you didn't get to watch it, I encourage you to go back and find it because we talked about conflict and how we handle conflict, and also the model, the biblical model of the way Jesus handled conflict, and, and, and also how we are uh, to negotiate difficult relationships. So tonight is a little bit different because I gotta start off with a kind of confession. One is this, is that oftentimes I have been guilty of thinking of the next best thing to maybe say or another way to be engaged in a conversation that I may or may not have had with you instead of really focusing on what you're saying. Um, easily distracted and it's a trap that a lot of us get into and it's not, not a healthy one but that sometimes we get consumed with us or what we want to say next or what we want to talk about, or how we want to respond to what we just heard, that we're just not great listeners. And so my confession is this, is that sometimes that's at the, at the core of that, it's just putting me uh, in front of somebody else. And how guilty are we of that? That we oftentimes go throughout the course of a day and we don't see the people closest to us. We don't notice somebody who's hurting. We don't hear it in their sentence. We don't see it in their eyes. We don't understand it by their body language. Because the truth is this, is that a lot of our worlds right now, especially in isolation, and, and, and I, I keep bringing it up every week, but on social media, uh, it's about us and how people are going to respond to us and not necessarily us paying attention to other people. And so... The word tonight is compassion. And what's it look like uh, for somebody to have compassion in their life? And listen, for, for somebody that's trying to figure out and follow Jesus, um, compassion has an added meaning. It, uh, it's, it's living in such a way and responding to people in such a way that we hope that they see Christ in us. And if you're not yet there, Jesus was the awesome perfect model and example for compassion. 
mean, you just look at his engagements and the people that he spent time with and the people that he, he sat with and he listened to. And for him to practice compassion, he hung out with broken people. And that's good news for, for all of us, right? Uh, because we're all broken. But Jesus practiced compassion and expected his followers to do the same. So what, what, what does that look like? So if you were in the U version reading plan uh, that started on Monday, and if you're not there yet, you can catch up, you can start tonight. Uh, it is great accountability for reading the Bible. We're in Luke and Acts. So about every three days, there's a video that helps explain what you're reading, what you're understanding. But um, uh, this morning, if you're going, starting on Monday and, and going through for seven days, this morning was Luke chapter seven, and I want to read it to you about how Jesus practiced compassion. Uh, it says this, soon afterwards, in Luke 7, verse 11, soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. So every reason in the world to be distracted by the people around him, the entourage, his disciples, uh, teaching on the side, asking questions, is going into this town. And a funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son. So single mom, son, he's died. Now, pause right there because if we're honest, if you're hearing on the news about somebody else that lost their life or this tragic car accident, or this person, you know, the numbers that they, they read each week for somebody that's passing away from COVID, we probably honestly don't slow down to put a face with that statistic or a name or a place in somebody's family. And, and that's a practice of compassion is just empathizing, even though we can't be there to experience that we can hurt for other people. So if you're hearing somebody share something with you or your family's talking about something that some tragedy that somebody else has gone through, compassion is just being able to, to pump the brakes a little bit, slow your world down and just, just listen. So this funeral's coming, it's a, it's a single mom and she's got her only son and, and the funeral procession's coming and Jesus got this large crowd following him and the funeral procession is coming out as he approaches the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Didn't know her. May have never met her or ever saw her. But something he had seen in her and about this experience, his heart was full of compassion. And let me stop also because it's really not just enough to feel bad for somebody, right? You can watch the right commercials and you feel bad about pets. They've got the music playing, little cat, little dog. You can give money to the Humane Society. I don't, I don't know if it's Humane Society, whatever it is, but it tugs at your heart. But it's one thing to have your heart tugged on. It's another thing to act on it. So Jesus does, just doesn't feel bad for this lady and her family that's grieving. When he sees her, his heart's overfilled and overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. And then he walked over to the coffin and he touched it. And the bearer stopped. The funeral stops. He reaches out and touches the coffin. After he tells her not to cry. And he says, young man, I tell you, get up. And then the dead boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. So whether he reaches in the casket, hands this, this boy over to his mom, or helps him out of the casket, they lower it down, and he walks him over to his mom, he raises this dead, this dead boy, raises him from the dead and gives him back to his mother. And Jesus gives him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd, and they praised God. Now, this is a good, a healthy fear, a respect and awe for the power of Jesus. And they began saying, A mighty prophet has risen among us. God has visited his people today. 
And the news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding countryside. Now, a couple things that I just want to leave you with. One is that Jesus noticed. It's easy to be wrapped up in your bubble, posting stuff about you, about your life, and, and all the great things happening in, inside of you and around you, or even, even the difficult stuff. The temptation is, is to be it all about us, right? Uh, but Jesus noticed somebody else. And the second thing is this, he didn't leave it at just noticing, but he, he put movement to his emotions. He acted on what he had seen, and that is compassion. So I want to leave you with um, a, a story. Uh, you know, oftentimes we're, we're told about Jesus and his compassion. Uh, he had compassion on others. When he, see, when he sees broken crowds and large crowds, and Scripture tells us in Matthew 9, he had compassion on them. So what, what does that look like for you and I? Well, uh, this may not be the perfect example, but Friday, uh, Dane and I went to eat um, in Cincinnati to a place um, that we wanted to go to. And, and within a matter of half a block from the restaurant, a gentleman came up to us. And uh, I knew he was going to be asking for something. I just felt like I, this was, he's going to ask for something. And he leaned in and he said, can you give me something to eat? And I wasn't sure I heard him right. Because he wasn't making eye contact, he was his his emotions just looked like he was a really really broken man as opposed to somebody that's wanting to get in your face with a cup asking for for help. And he said it again, and I said, um, "Sure, uh, you want a sandwich or something?" He said, "Sure, I I like to have a burger and onion rings." Well, there was one burger place right down the street. Uh, I said, come on, my, my son and I are stopping here at this, this restaurant, but I'll walk you down and I'll order for you. So we did. And uh, he ordered, very gracious, said thank you, appreciated it. And then he took his number because uh, they, they placed his order, took his number, and he sat down at a table. And I told him, I said, well, we're going to walk down to this other place. And uh, uh, I'll check, check on you. And he, he said, thank you again. And started looking out out the window just sitting by himself and so we walked down and we ordered and uh ordered our, our drinks and and um dane said that, that guy looked really sad right i mean like well, there's something else going on i said you know what i thought the same thing and uh so we went back and uh i did the check on him and like 20 minutes later i'm able to come back and uh and eat our food, but um, only by sitting at the table with this guy and slowing down and being inconvenienced for time and being inconvenienced for resources. Uh, you know, sitting with this guy in the midst of you know what we've got with with COVID. You know, uh, we both had had masks, but listening to his story of how broken he was. And by the time that the story was over, um, and, at, and at the end of it, he was telling some jokes. And he just appreciated sitting at the, at the table together uh, and, and telling a story and somebody to take him serious and somebody to listen to. Now, I don't tell you that because that's the choice that we make all the time. Uh, you know busy going from point A to point B, it is so easy to, to look at our own agenda and go where we want to go and, and, and do the things that we want to do that we miss, like, like we have blinders on, we miss a world of brokenness around us. And so for, for those that, that are following Jesus, the reason why you're instructed to, to have compassion on people is the hopes that they come to the knowledge of who Jesus is through your actions. And they come to the knowledge of who Jesus is because of the way that you're displaying compassion on somebody else. It's just not something else, another good thing to be doing, but um, a way to live and to put movement to your emotion that's going to hopefully point somebody else to Jesus and not just say, oh, you're such a good person. 
but the hopes that you're gonna have that conversation, which we did, and come to find out he, this guy was a Christian. Um, knew the Bible, we actually went to school a little bit, but uh, a great conversation and a uh, great few minutes that we got to spend with this guy. Uh, for those of you that are not yet there and you're thinking about Jesus, Jesus was the author and uh, greatest example of compassion because his world was often put on hold to love somebody who was broken, somebody who was hurting, somebody who was in a valley, somebody whose world had been turned upside down, somebody who had a horrible reputation, somebody who was ostracized, somebody who was uh, bankrupt on friendships. Jesus made time for them. And uh, I encourage you uh, to, to read in Luke. Uh, Luke starts off the, the, the Gospel of Luke. He says, listen, I've checked these facts. I've done an orderly account for you. He's writing to Theophilus. Uh, so that you may know that these things that you're hearing about this Jesus are true. And so you've got this biography of Jesus unfolding. And I encourage you to look at it and, and to read it and see uh, how Jesus treated other people and the reason why he loved broken people, all right? The great news is this, is that we do believe he died on our cross. He, we died, he died in our place for our sins. It's something that we can't do. You can't be good enough for God to give a thumbs up. You can't be good enough to, to erase your sinfulness. And uh, Jesus was good enough. He died on the cross for my, in my place and in your place. If you'd like to know more about what it means to be a Christian and a follower of Jesus, it's not just because you go to church. Like I'm, I'm in the church now. It's not just not because you own a Bible, but it's having a real moment, a real time where you trust Jesus at his word, that he was without sin, that he was the son of God, and that he died on a cross in your place, and that he rose again. And that is great news uh, for you and I. Can I pray with us tonight? And I encourage you just to think about the upcoming ways that we can connect, whether it's through the, uh, the Bob Ross painting night that we talked about or the uh, Zoom illusionist that's going to be coming or the movie night, which will be coming up on the 20th, I believe. Uh, on the 20th, Friday night, the 20th, okay, at 9 p.m. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for your grace. Uh, I just pray that uh, we are able to slow down and look not at our world, but look at the world of other people and see people who are hurting, whether it's uh, uh, through social media, whether it's through a text message, or even in person, Lord, that we're able to slow down and practice compassion. And the reason why we do this, uh, God, because you are so compassionate towards us by sending your son, Jesus. And it's in the hopes that other people come to know this same Jesus uh, that, that many uh, already know, Lord. And I pray for um, those who do not yet know who Jesus is. Uh, I pray for them to have the courage to ask those questions. I pray for the discipline for us to be able to open up the Bible and just to read and to study and to think uh, about the life of Jesus. And Father, uh, I just pray again for your, your continued grace, your goodness towards us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray tonight. Amen. Thanks so much. Have a great week.